This is the second episode in the series on Irvin Goffman. In the last episode, we noted that Goffman argued against projecting from language or actions to statements about broader society without attention to context, what he called the social situation. But you might ask, if Goffman doesn't want us to generalize about human behaviors, what is the point of social science at all? Doesn't this lead us to a kind of radical relativism, where any claim about society is valid just because someone says it? This is emphatically not where Goffman goes with his arguments. And in fact, these questions are rooted in a way of thinking that a lot of social theorists have tried to move away from for a long time. Namely, that the individual human consciousness should be the ultimate unit of analysis when it comes to thinking about society. For Goffman, this individualism has seeped into modern social sciences through an emphasis on things like personality or worldview, things supposedly lodged in our bodies and brains. This perspective sees society as made of groups of individuals with common traits, and that wherever we go, we bring this baggage with us. Instead, Goffman envisions society as a series of situations, face-to-face -face encounters that we find ourselves in in our everyday lives. And it's these situations that call on us to highlight or hide bits of the stories that we tell about ourselves, in essence to become the role that's being asked of us at any given time. Think about how couples sometimes develop a cutesy way of talking to each other. But if you move that same kind of talk to another situation, say, presenting at a big business meeting, it may be embarrassing, if not damaging, to what you're trying to accomplish. And the consequences might even be worse for bringing work talk into an intimate moment. <gasps> the point is that social situations like being intimate or leading a business meeting demand that we present relatively specific versions of ourselves. <coughs> and for the most part, everyday people go through great effort to manage these roles, sometimes keeping them utterly separate, and other times strategically combining them. So Goffman's perspective emphasizes the ways that we adapt to social situations. So much so that for him, the self doesn't have a stable core or essence. It's sort of called into existence by the situations that we find ourselves in and how we respond to them. But while identities and roles are constantly shifting, social situations have a remarkable amount of regularity. In fact, according to Goffman, we're probably on safer ground making observations about these situations, what makes them normal or unusual, than we are about individual people, per se. The final videos in this series on Goffman will introduce one of his most powerful analytical tools, called footing. It's a framework for checking individualist assumptions about how face-to-face -face interaction works. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, check out the first video on Goffman here, and subscribe for the later episodes on footing.